Hey guys, today we are going to answer the question, how do I find domain and range from word problems? So the first thing you need to do is determine if the situation is discrete or continuous because this will determine how you write the domain and range. If it is discrete, you're going to list the domain and range just like this, curly brackets, and then you'll list out the numbers. And if it's continuous, you will use inequalities to write the domain and range, such as something like that. Then you need to determine what the domain or independent and the range or dependent represent in the situation. An easy way to think of this is in an experiment, the domain or the independent variable is what you would change and the range or dependent is what changes because of that. So the independent is going to determine the dependent or the domain is going to determine the range. Once you've decided those two things, you are ready to write the domain and range. Here's some helpful tips. You can identify the minimum and maximum domain values first, and then that will also help you figure out the range. And sometimes it can be helpful to write an equation and make a table. So let's look at this first one. It says, Seth is filling bags with jelly beans. He's going to put 10 jelly beans in each bag and fill up at most four bags. So first thing we want to decide, is this discrete or continuous? This would be discrete because Seth is not going to have partial jelly beans or partial bags. There's like a finite number there. We're gonna list out the options. He's gonna have 10 jelly beans in each of the four bags. Now we need to decide the domain and the range. So the domain is going to be the number of bags that he decides to make because that's going to determine the number of jelly beans that he will need for each bag. Or that will determine the number of jelly beans that he needs in total. Okay, so now we are ready to actually list out the domain and the range. So remember the range was, or the domain was the number of bags, and it says he's going to fill up at most four bags. So that means he could have zero bags. He could have one, two, three, or four bags, but he's gonna have at most no more than four bags. And then the range is the number of jelly beans. So remember, he's going to put 10 jelly beans in each bag. So if he has zero bags, that'll mean zero jelly beans. If he has one bag, that'll mean 10 jelly beans. Two bag will be 20, three will be 30, and four will be 40. Okay, let's look at number two. It says, Sage is going to purchase no more than 10 pounds of jelly beans. Each pound of jelly beans is $4. Is this discrete or continuous? So this time, since we are talking about pounds of jelly beans, this is going to be continuous because you could have partial pounds of jelly beans. You could have like 1.2 pounds, 1.33 repeating pounds. So since we have those partials, it is going to be continuous. The domain is going to be the pounds of jelly beans because that is going to determine the range, which is the cost of the jelly beans. Okay, now let's think about the range. It said Sage is going to purchase no more than 10 pounds of jelly beans. Remember, the domain is the pounds of jelly beans. So no more than 10 means that he's gonna be less than or equal to 10, but he's also not going to have negative pounds. So that means we need to start at zero, domain is X, and then less than or equal to 10. So that's just showing that the domain is between zero and 10. And now that I have the domain, I can determine the range. It says each pound of jelly beans is $4. And remember the range was the cost of the jelly beans. So we want our range to match our domain, but just be talking about the cost instead of the pounds. So if he has zero pounds of jelly beans, that would also be zero dollars. Range is Y. And then it's going to be four dollars per pound and 10 times four is 40. Okay, let's look at our next situation. It says Daniel is coaching a basketball team that will have at least five, but no more than seven players. He will buy two jerseys for each of the players on his team. 
Is this discrete or continuous? This would be discrete because he's not going to have partial players or be buying partial jerseys. It's going to be a set number. What represents the domain? Well, that would be the number of players because that is going to determine the range, which is the number of jerseys that he'll have to buy. Okay, now let's talk about what the domain and range actually are. So the domain is the number of players. Let's look at what they told us about the number of players. He's going to have at least five, but no more than seven. So that means he's going to be in between five and seven. And remember, we're listing this out because it was discrete. So that would be five, six, or seven, at least five, but no more than seven. And then he's going to buy two jerseys for each of the players on his team that will help us figure out the range, which is the number of jerseys. So if he has five players, five times two is 10. If he has six players, six times two is 12. If he has seven players, seven times two is 14. So there's the range. Okay, let's look at this one. It says, David is throwing a basketball in the air. The basketball's height and feet can be modeled with a function of time in seconds after being thrown. So they told us a lot of information there. We are talking about time in seconds after it's being thrown, and we're gonna measure the height and feet. The maximum height of the ball, the maximum height the ball can reach is the 25 foot ceiling and it will be in the air for no more than seven seconds. So first thing we wanna answer, is this discrete or continuous? This is continuous. Because those partial seconds, like 1.5 seconds, the ball is still gonna be thrown. It's not like it's only gonna be thrown at one, two or three seconds. It's gonna be thrown continually up to seven seconds. What represents the domain? That would be the time in seconds because that's going to determine the height of the ball in feet. Okay, so it's continuous. We are going to write the domain and range with inequalities. So remember the domain was the time in seconds and they told us that the ball will be in the air for no more than seven seconds. So it's going to be less than seven, but I'm not gonna have negative time. So that means I need to start my domain at zero. So my domain would be zero is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to seven. And then my range, they told me that the maximum height the ball can reach is that 25 foot ceiling. So it's going to be less than 25, but it's not gonna go underground. It can't go below the ground. So the bottom of my range is gonna be zero. So my range would be zero is less than or equal to Y is less than or equal to 25. Okay, let's look at number five. Adam's mom is buying season passes for their local pool for her family. The passes cost $6 each and she will buy a minimum of two passes and a maximum of five passes. Discrete or continuous? This would be discrete. I don't think the pool is going to let them buy 1.5 passes or 2.7 passes. It's going to be two, three, four, five, or so on. What represents the domain? Well, that would be the number of passes that she's going to buy because that's going to determine the cost, the total cost of the passes. So now that I know that it's discrete and what each thing is representing, I can go ahead and list out the domain and range. So the domain was the number of passes. She's going to buy a minimum of two passes and a maximum of five passes. So that would be two, three, four, or five passes. And then based on that, I can determine the range. The passes cost $6 each. So that would be two times six is $12 for two passes. Three times six is 18, so it'd be 18 for three passes, 24 for four passes, and 30 for five passes. Okay, last one, it says, Amy is filling up her pool at a rate of 50 gallons per hour. She will fill up her pool in six hours. Discrete or continuous? This is continuous because filling up her pool is going to be a gradual thing. The 1.5 hours, 1.7 hours, etc., will be true. 
what represents the domain? That would be the number of hours because based on how many hours she has been filling up her pool will determine the number of gallons that are of water that are in the pool. Okay, so now we know it's continuous, we can write the domain and range with inequalities. So remember the domain was the number of hours and it told us she will fill up her pool in six hours. So it's going to be everything less than six would be true in this situation, except no negative numbers because we're not gonna have negative hours. So my domain would be zero is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to six. And then she is filling up her pool at a rate of 50 gallons per hour. So let's write our range based on the domain. So if there are zero gallons, or if she's been filling up her pool for zero hours, that means that there's going to be zero gallons in the pool. And then if she has filled it up for the full six hours and it was 50 gallons per hour, six times 50 is 300. So it'd be less than or equal to 300.